We are talking with uh, Julie Wallace and Tim Buckley, both are candidates for Batavia City Council at Large. We are on WBTA AM 1490, and a videotape is being made of our candidates' appearance this morning, and that tape will be made available later today at thebatavian.com, thebatavian.com, and with that, we'll go back to Howard Owens. Howard? Thank you, Dan. So, picking up the thread of consolidation, one of the selling points for consolidation is cost savings. What we've seen so far isn't so much direct cost savings. There seems to be some personnel issues that are not being directly addressed in discussions of cost, uh, consolidation. And chief among them, the biggest cost area for the city is police and fire. So what is your view as the future of police and fire, both in a consolidation scenario or if consolidation doesn't go through? And we'll start with Julie. Uh, what happens, what's the future of uh, police and fire in the city of Batavia? The police and fire? Um, I think that if we do consolidate the, the, the fire and the police, I think there's going to be, I think there's going to be some issues there. Um, I think there's going to be some job loss there. So I'm not sure if that's going to be a good idea or not because I don't want to see any job loss, but I also don't want to see any, any money loss either. So that's still an iffy topic. I think I'd have to look more into that and see what happens. Uh, Tim, would you like to pick that yes. up? <clears throat> I, I, think, I think what we're looking at is this. If we become one Batavia in 2013, city of Batavia, our fire department and police department will stay as, as they are. Now, I think everything will evolve. If we go through this process and we realize that we can then become part, part full-time, part volunteer fire department, I'm sure that door will always stay open and, and remain that way. If Gary Mayha comes down and says, you know, through the years, why don't we become a metro, which has been looked at and it's been discussed before, I'm sure that door is open also, but it's going to be an evolution, and it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in 2013. Mm -hmm. It might be five. It might be 10 years down the road, mm -hmm. but I think that door remains open. It door, the door does remain open. We, we took it upon ourselves these past four years. They've been trying to close the fire department on Ellicott Street since my father was a councilman back in the 70s. Never happened. We did it, th we did it during my time, the four years we were here. We sold it. We profited from it, and we moved on. We have an ambulance service that I knew wasn't working. Great service, wasn't working. We had to move on, and we did. Collectively, as a council, we decided we must move on and do away with it. We did away with it September 1st, and now we're effectively, okay, running an ambulance service for the whole county. We did it. Now. We're 36 members in the, in the fire department. They were at... I believe 50, 54, 56, we reduced that. We need fire and police. I'm, a, I'm an advocate, I'm a strong advocate for fire and police. But will I leave my mind open for the taxpayer if we can cut costs by doing things differently? Absolutely I will. All right, we've got running out of time very quickly, so I'm gonna ask you both for some shorter uh, answers on, on this question. The Batavia City School District has proposed uh, to use a, a piece of property they own on North Street for some athletic fields. At least one city council person has come out strongly opposed to that project. Now, while it is a proposal of the city school district, if their proposal is to go forward, city council will be asked to approve uh, a grant application as part of the funding scheme. Julie, are you in favor of that project? Would you support a grant application to make it happen? I don't see why we do need that athletic field. We got the Vandetta Stadium and we have Notre Dame Field. I don't see why we need another one. Tim, how about you? <clears throat> I, would, I would like to see the school district uh, come up with another plan. I'm not going to uh, put that type of uh, 
situation up there in the first ward. I, I wouldn't approve it. But I remain open-minded. If they want to change it and move it to a alternate site, I could possibly back it. Back it. Howard? Great, thank you. Uh, Julie, we'll start with you again. Uh, the I want to ask you this because you weren't there uh, on council at the time that Jason Molino's raise came up. And Tim, we'll come back and ask, you voted for that raise and we'll give you an opportunity to address your thoughts on that. But Julie, looking back at the three years of, of work that Jason has done, uh, particularly as it relates to budget items and, and uh, some of the changes in service that have taken place in the city, how would you rate Jason's job performance and would you have voted for a raise if you were on council? I think Jason has done an, an awesome job, and I think he deserves every bit of money that he has earned. Right. Thank you. Tim? That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would just like to add this, all right? Four years ago when I came back on, when I came on and I was elected by the people of Batavia, the man that was in charge at the time, he pretty much ripped the city off. He lied to council. Charlie Mellon and I and several others saw this right off the bat, and we knew we had a problem. He left shortly thereafter. We all know what happened. He went on and to bigger and better things, but he left us high and dry. Jason Molino comes in, young, young man. Some council people weren't so sure, but this was a good move. But we moved with him, and I tell you what, I love the kid. He's intelligent. He's, he's ethical. He's get-the-job-done type guy my kind of guy and did he deserve a pay raise you bet he did you bet he yeah he absolutely positively deserved that raise and i support him and i i really appreciate the job that he and his staff do we all should i want to thank both of our candidates for allowing us to cover the ground that we did in a in a very short period of time our thanks to tim buckley and julie wallace for joining us this morning best of luck in your campaign We'll take a break and we'll be back with more on AM 1490 WBTA.